I'm about to generate a complete research-backed blog post with custom images in under 5 minutes. Thanks to NADN's new multi-agent feature, I've got a specialized content team that works 37 times cheaper than using one model to do it all. So what's the secret? Instead of one confused agent trying to do everything, I've got a research specialist, a writing specialist, an image specialist, and a smart coordinator orchestrating it all. Better quality output for a fraction of the cost and zero tool confusion. So in the next few minutes, I'll show you exactly how to build this multi-agent content machine. Let's go ahead and see how this works. Find a blog post about the history of coffee. All right, so here's what's happening now. The blog writer agent, that's my orchestrator, running on Claude Sonnet 4, just received our topic, and it's making a game plan. So instead of trying to do everything itself, it delegated by calling the title and structure tool. And here we have a title and a structure as well. Let's go ahead and ask it to start writing. Now the orchestrator called the research agent and this research specialist is gathering comprehensive data from multiple sources. It's also running a much cheaper OpenAI GPT-4.1 mini model, which is significantly cheaper than Claude Sonnet 4. But it's perfect for just gathering data and focusing on one thing. Now the orchestrator is taking that clean, summarized research and hauling the right section tool. Again, this is a specialized agent, a cheap model, and a focused job. It's not worried about research or images, just excellent writing. And now we moved on to the second section, and this whole cycle is going to repeat itself until we have generated all of the sections. Finally, we'll call the Generate Image tool to generate a hero image using Replicate and Flux Schnell. So this is the magic. Each agent is optimized for its specific task. There's no tool confusion, no cognitive overload, and the expensive thinking model, which is anthropic, only gets used when it actually adds value, the orchestration and the final synthesis. So there it is, a complete blog post, research, written, and with an image. And we used a grand total of 152,000 tokens. And you can imagine how expensive this would have been if we were only using Anthropic. But because we farmed out a lot of that other thinking to sub-agents, we were able to do this for a fraction of the cost. And here is the blog post. All ready to go, formatted with a, with a title, with headings, with paragraphs, with the image. If you're new here, my name is Shub, and I build AI and automations for businesses and professionals to help them save money and save time. If you're interested in hiring me to build AI automations for you, go ahead and click on the link in the description and we can schedule a call. Now with that out of the way, let's dive in to see how we can build this out. I have a blank workflow here. We're going to start with a chat trigger. And obviously, you can use any trigger that you want, but for testing, ch uh, the chat trigger is more than enough. And to that, we are going to add our main orchestrator AI agent. So I'm going to hit the plus icon, type in AI agent, scrap that. The source for the prompt is the connected chat trigger node. And we also need to give it a system message. And under system message, I am going to go back here. Let's go ahead and grab the prompt. Copy. I'm going to paste that in here. Keep this an expression. Expand that. Select all and paste. And here is the prompt. And in this prompt, we are just instructing this AI agent as to how it should use its sub agents, and finally how to assemble that final blog post. And we also we are also giving it a format as well. So now that that's done, we also want to add an option and go to max iterations. Make sure that max iteration is set at a higher number like 20. Otherwise, if you're looking to write a longer blog post, it might just stop somewhere in between. We also need to give it a chat model. So I'm going to use Anthropic and Claude Sonnet 4 because it's a fairly advanced model. You can use any advanced model here. You can use Gemini Flash 2.5. 
you can use Grok, um, you can use OpenAI 01 or any of the larger models, and those should be able to handle the orchestration very well. So we have Anthropic here. We also need to give it memory. Simple memory is fine for now, but you can also use uh, Postgres if you like. Make sure the context window length is also 10. So it keeps track of everything that's happening. And now we need to build out the tools. So let's just go ahead and rename this. Blog Lighter Office Writer. Okay. So if you go back to the main agent, we'll see that the first tool is the titles and structure tool. So let's go ahead and build that out. So under tools, I'm just going to drag this here. And we're going to search for AI agent and click on AI agent tool. And we'll call this title and structure. And remember, we need to change the description and the prompt. So I'm going to go back, grab it from here. So the description is telling the main agent what this agent does. So we need to be very specific. And we're also going to give it a prompt. Let's go ahead and expand that. Come back here. Grab this. So you are an expert at researching for writing website content and blog posts. I'll provide you with a topic. And you are to use the perplexity tool and autocomplete suggestions tools to help you craft the engaging title and H2HV structure for the blog post. Perfect. Then we're also passing the topic. And this JavaScript variable in NADN means that the AI agent has to fill this in. All right, perfect. Now for the title and structure, we can use a much cheaper chat model. So let's go ahead and use OpenAI. And I'm gonna use 4.1 mini, which is the a newer model. And it's one of the cheaper ones. 4.1 nano is even cheaper. 4.1 mini can handle more tokens and more advanced thinking. So because we're doing research, we wanna make sure that we're, we're giving it a fighting chance. Perfect. And to this, we can give it its own tools. We need to get research from per Perplexity, and we also are going to use the Google Autocomplete API with uh, SERP API. So let's start with Perplexity. Just give it the Perplexity tool. You'll go, you, if you don't have your credentials set up, you're going to have to go ahead and do that. I already have my account. Otherwise, you can click Create a New Credential and grab your API key. Message a model. Choose whichever model you want. For um, the structure, you can use Sonar or Sonar Pro. Both are fine. Let's use Sonar Pro over here. Uh, as for the messages, we're going to click this and let the model define that parameter. Perfect. So the perplexity tool is here. And we also need to set up the SERP API tool. Now, so SERP API gives you access to all of these Google functions. So we're going to use Google Autocomplete. And if we scroll down, you'll see that this is the URL that we need to pass. Obviously, this is the query, which we're going to replace. So let's come back in here, add another tool. And this time, it's an HTTP request tool. Let's come back to our main agent and grab the description. Autocomplete suggestions. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that. Paste it in here. Let's replace this as well. Autocomplete suggestions. The method is get. And I've constructed a special URL. So I'll walk you through what that is. We can click expression, expand this. So the URL is the endpoint for searching Google Autocomplete. We're also passing in the query or the actual search phrase that we want. And we also have to pass in the API key like this. Uh, now I'm going to have to reset this API key once I'm done recording, but this is how you would have to do it. Authentication is none. You can also set, uh, if you if you want to save SERP API, you can uh, go to generic credential type and use a query auth and just save your API key securely. But just since this is just for testing, I've left it in hard-coded. But in production and in practice, you should actually go ahead and choose query auth down here. Right, that's it. That's all we need to do for this. So the title and structure tool is set up. Next up, we need to build out the uh, research tool. So let's go ahead and grab this. Click here again, add AI agent. Perfect. And now let's go ahead and build out to be a research agent. So we have a description. Copy. Paste that description in here. 
a research AI agent that uses Tabli and Perplexity to get information about a topic. We also need to pass in the prompt as well. Copy, expression, expand, paste. You are an expert at researching for writing website content and blog posts. I'll provide you with a topic and you are to use the Perplexity and Tabli tools to get relevant information and its sources. Compile it into what I need to write the section of my article and output it. It's important that you output the sources as well and we also need to pass in the topic. And here again, we're using the JavaScript variable which the AI agent is going to determine. So we can use the same chat model as we did here. Since we're doing research, let's go ahead and grab and connect that over here. You can also add another one, but you can just connect it as well. We don't need to give this memory, but we do need to give it uh, two tools. One is perplexity and the other one is tabli. So we can just go ahead and add another perplexity tool. All right, message a model. We're going to use sonar once again. Uh, the text is going to be defined by the model. Make sure you have your credentials set up. That's that. And we also need to hook it up with Tavoli. Now, Tavoli doesn't have anything built into Anyden yet, so we're just going to have to use an HTTP request. And if you head over to Tavoli.com and make a free account, you can uh, get up to a thousand searches every single month on the free plan, which, which is incredible. Uh, it should be more than enough. So you're going to have your API key, which I have add it so we're going to be making a post request and the post request is going to this url api.tavli.com slash search copy paste that in here we do need authentication and i've already saved this so i'm going to select generic credential type header auth and let's go ahead and choose tavli i had that set up and we need to send a body as well the body type is json we're going to specify that using JSON, click expression, expand, and let's go through what the body is. Let's grab that, paste through here. So we have a query. And again, this is that JavaScript variable that the AI is going to define. Uh, it's, you can, for topic, you can choose general or news. I'm just going to leave this as general for now. The search depth is basic. We want three chunks for source, max results three. These are all default settings. And just leave these as it is because for simple blog post research, uh, the stuff that just these parameters is going to get you should be more than enough. So that is our Tabli tool set up. Tabli put the main Tabli research. And that is our research tool all done. And we forgot to rename the tool. So let's do research. It's perfect. So we have the title of the structure set up. We also have the research set up. Now we actually have to write out the blog post. Let's go ahead and expand that. Add another AI agent. This time this is the write section bold. Let's go back to our original one and grab the prompts. Write section. The description is the write blog post section tool. And now the prompt is going to be defined by the model which means that the orchestrator model, Anthropic, is going to decide what prompt to give the right section model. And if you go back to the prompt here, the, the main prompt, we're, we're already telling it that you're an expert writer um, and you want to write insightful, well-researched, engaging, and readable content pieces. So it already understands what we're looking for. So we're just going to let the main agent, the main AI model, decide what prompt it should provide the right section because it's going to take the output from the research agent, feed it to this and give it instructions as to how it wants to write it up. Now here's where we can save a little bit more money. So in, uh, instead of using ChatGPT uh, 4.1 uh, mini as we did here, we can go ahead and use 4.1 narrow because there's not much thinking going on. All we're doing is just outputting text based on uh, information that we've already provided it. So there, there's no research it has to do. There's no thinking, uh, quote unquote, that it has to do. Let's go ahead and select 4.1 dash Anno. So this is a much cheaper version. Select that. And that's the right section tool. That's all there is to it. Finally, 
we need to generate an image as well. So that is our final tool. Click AI agent again. Come back here and let's refer to what we have for generate image. AI agent typed in generate images. That's the description, which is very important. Agent tool is now called generate image. And the prompt is this over here. Let's come back. Expression. Expand. And paste. This time we're passing in two variables from the AI. So we're passing in the topic, what the article is about. And we're also passing in the image style. So the image style can be an illustration. It can be photorealistic. It can be whatever. Uh, but we're letting the AI agent decide that. And we're also giving it, it's giving it instructions to use the replicate generate image tool to start the generation process. Then use the get image tool using the urls.get field to check and keep checking until the status is complete. And once complete, return the image URL. Perfect. Now to this, we also need to give a chat model. We can use uh, 41 Nano gear as well. Let's go ahead and connect that. And we need two tools this time. So the first tool is generate image. Use replicate to generate an image. That's the description. Tools. Let's go ahead and expand that. HTTP request. Use replicate to generate image. Replicate. Generate image. The method is post, which is important. Here is the URL. Now, the, uh, this is for the Flux Schnell model, but you can certainly use any model that you want. Flux Schnell is the cheapest, which is good for demonstration. Obviously, for production, you may want to use a slightly more advanced, and more, um, more expensive image generation model. Authentication, again, I have it saved. Generic credential type, header auth. And this time, I'm going to choose replicate if you don't have one. You can just go ahead and create your new credential. And we do want to send a body, JSON, to specify the body using JSON. And let's go ahead and grab that from here. Copy. Let's paste it. So we have, this is that particular structure that Replicate looks for. The only thing we're actually passing in is the prompt. Again, using that special variable. Everything else is uh, at default, but certainly you can change whatever you want over here. We also need to uh, add the check status tool. So it's another HTTP request. Check image generation stats. Let's go ahead and grab check status of generated image, copy, paste that. This time it's a get, and the URL is going to be defined automatically by the model. Grab that here, but we do need to add authentication. So go back to generic credential type, header auth, and replicate. Perfect. That's all set. And there is our entire workflow completely built out. Now, if you want to make this even more powerful, let's clean this up for a second. If you want to make this even more powerful, you could hypothetically nest AI agent tools within AI agent tools. So let's say you wanted to do a two-step research process. You could just drag this down, add another AI agent tool. So this time, this AI, while it's doing research, it's going to call another AI agent. And, and hypothetically, you can just keep nesting down as, as far as you want to go. And, and this is how your, the AI agent tool can really, really up the level of complexity that your NAD and workflows can have. Uh, and really by farming off a lot of the thinking to other AI tools and AI agents, the, the main agent does not get overwhelmed uh, because if you give the main agent too many instructions at once, it may end up missing a few. But by using this methodology, you can basically guarantee that all of your sub-instructions will be followed as well. So if you enjoyed this tutorial, I'd really appreciate it if you could give it a like. Do remember to subscribe to the channel for more AI and automation content.